Our next keynote speaker is Ricard Steiber, SVP of Virtual Reality at HTC. Ricard will take the stage to talk on how and why VR will change the world for consumers and businesses alike, providing perspectives on the road ahead for this emerging medium. Please join me in welcoming Ricard of HTC to the stage. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Great to see so many VR and AR enthusiasts here at the show today. Uh, my name is Rickard Steiber. I'm with HTC, and I thought I'd give you some perspectives on virtual reality, where we are, and uh, where we're heading. So I think all of us had some moment in our life where we got inspired. It was something that triggered you all to come here to the show. And I think for, for me, it was the Matrix. It was Neo jumping into virtual reality and having all these experiences. So I would say that we are on a journey. We're just in the beginning of the journey. I think all of you are very fortunate because you're going to remember this day as the very early days of this journey. So I believe that virtual reality will change the world for consumers and businesses alike. I believe that it will make it a better place. It will create opportunities for us to connect with friends, family, places, and experiences in completely new ways. And the way we see things is that virtual reality is like this magical portal that could take you into pretty much anything imaginable. So as we have launched our product, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the tech later on, when we see what people are doing in virtual reality now, that it's sort of available for the masses, is that there are a bunch of different experiences. So what I thought I'd do is I'll show a little video from uh, our partner, Valve, who did a mixed reality video, so basically filming you when you're in virtual reality uh, in front of a green screen, so you can capture both you as well as what you're doing in virtual reality. So let's have a quick look on what the early users are doing in virtual reality right now. From walking to the couch, walking to the walls. Oh, this is so cool, I can move all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So as you can see, there's a bunch of creativity out there. But what's really interesting is that today it's primarily gaming and games. And the reason for that is, of course, they are the early adopters of new technology. They have the uh, PCs or the game consoles or the high-end smartphones being able to consume this kind of content. So, but, it's, but it is changing. And um, it's interesting, we, we speak a lot with uh, a lot of the really big gaming studios, the movie studios. And as you know, creating content for virtual reality takes, you know, takes a lot of time. So entertainment, as we know, it will change. And it's interesting how it's going from sort of sitting lean back in front of your television to being immersed in your favorite sort of Netflix show to being in a computer game to being completely immersed. And it's going to be both uh, graphical and cinematic storytelling that we have never seen before. So it is very early days, but for this Christmas and this holiday, 
you will see some of the big titles uh, also having a lot of immersive virtual reality experiences. So entertainment is definitely going to change. However, I think that one of the things that's really going to change is the way we think about social. So most of us are probably spending far too much time uh, looking down on our phones, checking out what our people are, or our friends are doing on Facebook or Twitter or Google or Instagram or whatever your f favorite social media is. So I think virtual reality has the potential to bring us together to share experiences. It could be just hanging out in a chat room, chilling, watching a movie, playing a game, but it's also doing all these discoveries together. So I think what we're seeing now is that more and more of these uh, early virtual reality experiences having social components, so experiencing things with your friends. And that's going to go across all the different sort of verticals coming. Personally, I'm most excited about uh, education. So uh, I was maybe not the best kid in school. I have two young girls. And you know, when you think about uh, topics like history or geography, you know, maybe you didn't think those were the most exciting topics uh, in your day. However, if you actually could travel with your uh, friends to Machu Picchu and experience it or go back in time to ancient Egypt and sort of see how they built the pyramids, education will change. The way you think about physics, uh, shapes, mathematics, there will be a completely new revolution when it comes to education. And I think a key point here is that I think most of us heard that if you read something, you remember certain things. If you see a picture, a picture says a thousand words. If you see a movie, it becomes much more immersive. But you're actually doing it, and you think you're there. Your recall of that piece of information is going to be so much higher. The other thing we're starting to see is how businesses now realize uh, the potential for virtual reality. So we have a bunch of car companies coming to us, uh, basically thinking very differently about their retail experiences. So what they're doing is that you're able to test drive any car. So this is, uh, uh, we have BMW, we have Audi, we have Tesla. They're all thinking about how you can change the retail experience. So not only are you going to be able to drive your car in VR, you're going to build your own car. So if you think about that showroom, maybe you have one or two cars there. However, you will have this thing uh, where you will be able to build your own car, get in and, and drive it around. And it's happening for most retail. So uh, we see that virtual reality experiences will be something that will change retail across almost any vertical. The other thing which is, which is very, very interesting is how science is changing with virtual reality. So today, uh, very advanced operations and medical procedures, you can practice them in virtual reality. There is like really no way else you could do that. You could have your teacher come in showing you how to do it, uh, or you could basically be in a ghost mode doing this thing. Uh, we're having uh, big engineering companies like Boeing thinking about how do you create these engines and basically pulling them to pieces and putting them back together again. Uh, you have service personnel who need to know how to repair something. They could have a tutor coming in and pointing at it's this little uh, button here you should press. So all these industries are changing and pretty much what's happening is that if you show uh, someone virtual reality and the potential, they can take their experience plus virtual reality and they will figure out what the new business opportunities are. So I'm a Swedish guy and um, as all uh, loyal Swedes here in, in the US, we go to IKEA. Uh, and uh, IKEA, of course, also launched a virtual reality app, but it's very interesting how you know, companies like IKEA, they have already scanned uh, the CAD measurements of every furniture they have. They have all the textures. So you basically can fill your empty living room with the furniture, see how it looks. Also, some of you may be been thinking about buying a house, talking to architects. Instead of looking at boring drawings, you can now go into the house. You can change that door from being a square to being a sort of a portal or whatever you want. Um, so a lot of these industries are changing forever. And I think that the, the companies who are the first to adopt the technology are going to be the winners uh, for the future. So when you think about virtual reality, take, take a second or so. What would you be in virtual reality? I think we all saw the movie, The Avatar. But what would you do if you could do anything? What would you do if you could go anywhere or be anything uh, in any universe, in any point in time. So it's pretty mind-boggling what you can do, because you can really do everything. So 
at HTC, we talk about full presence. And full presence basically means that when you're in virtual reality, your brain tries to make sense of your reality. Typically, when I talk to my wife, she has certain perception on what the reality is, and I have a different one. Um, but our brain always tries to make sense of reality. So if you have a really good experience, your brain thinks that you're really there. It's not pretend, you're really there. And the technology that we have today, which makes this possible, is a couple of things. So you can see that you have the, the headset, you have some hand controllers, and there's little bumps on these uh, devices, which basically are sensors. So in each corner of the room, there is an infrared laser that basically maps the entire room so that you can move around in virtual reality. And the latency uh, between you move somewhere uh, to it actually happens in virtual reality is below 20 milliseconds, which means that it is no delay at all. You probably heard that people might get sick in virtual reality. And the reason is because that there is a longer delay and latency, and that you're also not able to move around or interact with objects. So currently, this is the state of the art technology. This is, of course, the you know, beginning of the journey. So it will be much, much better going forward. But this is where we are today. So looking ahead, um, the way I would think about it is that we're basically entering a new era. A new computing platform is emerging. So we probably were all part of the, the PC and the web, the mobile revolution. And now I think we're safe to say that we are entering the, the virtual reality revolution. And there are three factors to, to basically support that it's happening this time, because we had this conversation a couple of times before in the past. The first one is that consumers are here. People have access to mobile phones. People have access to game consoles, PCs. And for a little some money, you can have access to technology. So the consumer market is here. The second is that the distribution of content is free through the internet, Google, Facebook, YouTube. You can basically distribute content for free. The third thing is that production. It doesn't matter if it's 360 videos or if you're doing a game based on Unity or Unreal or some of the other gaming platform. The cost and easiness of creating virtual reality content is very, very low. So you have production, distribution, and consumption all falling into place, and with a very rapid speed increasing in terms of performance and, and quality. So that is why it's happening now, and I think that it will happen very, very quickly, much faster than anyone can imagine. So think about virtual reality as a couple of different layers. You have your phone, maybe you have some simple 360 videos. You would have your game console, uh, where you have maybe sitting, moving around, playing a game. And then you'll have f fully immersive experiences where you will move around in the virtual reality space and have full, full presence. So uh, this girl, I want to uh, show a little quick clip from YouTube. Uh, one of my kids' favorite applications is uh, a paint application, very simple paint, uh, called Tilt Brush. So let's have a look what you can do in Tilt Brush. So thank you for that, Google. So um, hopefully, I have uh, got give, given you some taste for things to come. Hopefully, you, like Neo, will um, take the red pill and follow me down the VR rabbit hole. So with that, thank you very much for your time and attention.